Welcome to Civil Share YouTube channel. Hi. In part 1 video, we have seen pipe rack design philosophy. Those who are missed the part 1 video, link is available in description, please watch it. Okay. In this video, I'm sure you are going to understand the pipe rack design structural guidelines with respect to below sections. 1. Global International Codes and Standards. 2. General Information. 3. Design Loads. 4. Load Combinations. 5. Piperac Superstructure Design. 6. Piperac Adequacy Check. Before that, please do subscribe to get more videos like this. Ok let's start the first one Global International Codes used for Piperac Design. Codes. American. British. European. Indian. Uses. Dead or imposed loads. Wind loads. Seismic loads. Steel design. Concrete design. Bolts and nuts materials. Structural shapes. OK let's see American codes uses. ASCE 7 is used for minimum design loads for buildings and other structures. Same ASCE 7 is used for wind load and anchor bolt design for petrochemical facilities. Again ASCE 7 is used for guidelines for seismic evaluation and design of petrochemical facilities. AISC 360 Manual of Steel Construction is used for steel allowable stress design. ACI 318 is used for building code requirements for reinforced concrete and design. ASTM American Society for Testing and Materials A36 is used for specification for carbon structural steel and A325 specification is used for high strength bolts, nuts and plane washers. ASTM A992 A992M specification is used for structural steel shapes in building framing. OK let's see British codes. BS 6399 Part 1, 1996 is used for code of practice for dead and imposed loads. BS 6399, Part 2, 1997 is used for code of practice to wind loads. Uniform Building Code UBC guidelines are used for seismic design. BS 5950 Part 1, 2000 Code of Practice is used for structural use of steelwork in building design to the rolled and welded section. BS 8110 Part 1, 1997 Code of Practice is used for structural use of concrete to design and construction. BS 3692, 1967, Code of practice is used for specification for hexagon bolts, screws and nuts. BS4, Part 1, 1993, Code of practice is used for structural steel sections specification for hot rolled sections. OK let's see European code uses. EN 1991, 1 Part 1, 2002, Code of practice used for densities, self-weight and imposed loads for buildings. EN 1991. 1 Part 4, 2005, Code of Practice used for wind actions. EN 1998. 1, 2004 Code of Practice used for earthquake resistance to buildings. N 1993. 1 Part 1, 2005 Code of Practice used for design of steel structures. EN 1992. 1 Part 1, 2004 Code of Practice used for design of concrete structures. 
PN 1993. 1 Part 8. 2005 Code of Practice Used for Design of Bolts and Nuts. EN 10365 Code if practice used for the European norm for selection of structural sections in steel. IS 875 Part 1 and 2 Code of practice used for dead loads and imposed loads. IS 875 Part 3 Code of practice used for wind loads. IS 1893, Part 1, Criteria for Earthquake-Resistant Design of Structures. IS 800 Code of Practice Used for General Construction in Steel. IS 456 Code of Practice Used for Plain and Reinforced Concrete. IS 1364 Code of Practice Used for Hexagon Head Bolts, Screws and Nuts. IS-808 Code of Practice Used for Hot Rolled Steel Beam, Column, Channel and Angle Sections. OK. Note. British switch from using BS to Euro code since 2010. Dot. So above table given info about British codes for just information. 2. General Information. This point applies to 1. Strutted main pipe racks 2. Unstrutted secondary pipe racks 3. T. Supports Let us discuss above said points in section 5. OK. Pipe rack superstructures and foundations shall be designed for the loads and load combinations specified in sections 3.0 and 4.0 of this guideline. The maximum allowable beam deflection Dmax due to total load shall be L, 240. The maximum allowable seismic drift limit shall not exceed H, 100. Connections for steel pipe rack shall conform to below requirements. Shop connections, bolted or welded. Connections made in a fabrication shop are called shop connections. Bolting and welding may be used for shop connections and field connections. But a fabrication shop will have a desired fastening method suited to its equipment and fabrication methods. Field connections, normally bolted. Connections made in the field by the steel erector are called field connections. Field connections are typically bolted. Sometimes connections may be field welded when conditions are such that a bolted connection is not suitable. Primary members, HSB with ASTM A325. High strength medium carbon steel most common bolts used in building construction. Vibration stress, slip critical connections. Slip critical type connections shall be used in connection subject to vibration or repeated stress reversal. OK now we can see the design loads to pipe racks. This video guides the minimum requirements for the design of pipe racks in process industry facilities in accordance with the referenced American standards. The following loads shall be considered in the design of pipe rack superstructures and foundations. Erection or dead load shall include the weight of all process equipment, pipes, valves and accessories, electrical and lighting conduits, trays, switchgear, instrumentation, fireproofing, insulation, structural steel plates and shapes, etc. Foundation concrete weight along with any soil overburden shall also be considered as dead load. All piping shall be considered empty of piping load, that is erection load, when calculating dead load. OK let's see pipe erection loads. For pipe deer less than 12 inch, 1 kN per meter square shall be considered for the design of major pipe racks. For cable tray erection loads. 0.5 to 1 kilo newton per meter square shall be considered. OK let's look into operating load. Pipe rack operating loads. 
It shall be defined as the gravity load imposed by liquid or viscous material in piping during operation. Piperax shall be designed for present and future product loads, unless stipulated otherwise by client standards. For pipe DIA less than 12 inch, 2 kN per meter square shall be considered. For cable tray operation loads, 2 kN per meter square shall be considered. OK, let's see test loads. Piping test load. The piping test load shall be defined as the gravity load imposed by the liquid, normally water, used to pressure test the piping. Small vapor lines are normally considered filled with water. For design. The empty weight of pipes plus weight of test medium. To be considered. OK, let's see thermal loads. Pipe thermal loads shall be defined as forces caused by changes in the degree of heat present in piping due to friction forces, FF, and anchor forces, AF, and temperature forces, TF. Pipe supports must be designed to resist the frictional force. Normally friction forces are caused by hot lines sliding across a pipe support during startup and shutdown are assumed to be partially resisted by adjacent cold lines. The resultant friction force, however, shall be taken as the larger of the following, that is maximum of 5 kN versus 5% of all the operating load, at each level applied in transverse direction. Let's look into anchor forces AF. Anchor and guide forces and locations shall be obtained from the piping stress analysis and piping isometric drawings. Normally pipe anchor and guide forces are produced from thermal expansion, internal pressure, and surge. Piperax beams, struts, columns, braced anchor frames, and foundations shall be designed to resist actual pipe anchor and guide loads. The calculated anchor force, however, shall be taken as the larger of the following that is maximum of anchorage load versus 5% of all the operating load 4 bays length, at each rack level applied in longi direction. Now can see the temperature force TF. These forces caused by structure expansion and contraction should be considered in the design with the structural steel checked for temperature change, accordance with client standard requirements. Now let's see wind load WL. Wind loads on all pipe, equipment, structural members, cable trays, platforms, ladders, and other attachments to the pipe rack shall be considered in the design. The total wind load per foot on pipes, F, can be determined using the following equation. F equals QZ GCFA in pounds with reference to ASCE 7, table 6-1. Important note. For major pipe racks, the design lateral wind load on pipes at each pipe deck shall be applied. Longitudinal wind load on pipe racks are negligible compared to other longitudinal forces and, therefore, can normally be disregarded. OK, let's see. Earthquake load, EQL. Earthquake loads shall be computed and applied in accordance with ASCE 795. OK, let's see load combinations, loading combinations, allowable stress design. The following load combinations shall be considered in superstructure and foundation design of Piperax. Erection load plus operation load plus friction load plus anchor load plus temperature load, if any. These are to be considered as load combination 1 that is maximum operating gravity loads 0 0.75 times inter 0 0.9 times of erection load plus 1 times of wind load these are to be considered as load combination 2 that is minimum dead load plus wind load 0 0.75 times of erection load plus operating load plus anchor load plus wind load or earthquake load 
These are to be considered as load combination 3 that is maximum operating gravity plus wind or earthquake load. 0.80 times of erection load plus operating load plus 0.25 times of wind load or 0.25 earthquake load. These are to be considered as load combination 4 that is test load plus wind or earthquake load. Now let's see loading combinations and load factors for strength design. 1.4 times of erection load plus operating load plus friction load plus anchor load plus temperature load. These are to be considered as load combination 1 that is maximum operating gravity loads. Next. 0.9 times of erection load plus 1.3 times of wind load. These are to be considered as load combination 2 that is, minimum dead load plus wind load. Next. 0.75 times of 1.4 operating loads plus 1.4 erection loads plus 1.4 anchor loads plus 1.7 wind loads or 1.9 earthquake loads. These are to be considered as load combination 3 that is maximum operating gravity loads plus wind or earthquake loads. Next. 1.4 erection loads plus 1.4 operating loads plus 0.57 wind loads or 0.63 earthquake loads. These are to be considered as load combination 4 that is test load plus wind load or earthquake load. I ended up splitting this video in half, I couldn't cover all the stuff within this video, so stay tuned for the continuation of this part. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.